Welcome back everybody. Today we're upgrading the shelf behind me. I've had it for a few years now and I still absolutely love it. I think a lot of you guys love it as well. There's one thing however that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Today we're finally doing it. So today's video is actually sponsored by F-Zone. I've been working with them for a while now. And they have some really good products. I've already shown you guys the stainless steel canister filter. I've shown you the auto top off system and some of the lily pipes as well. Today, however, we're taking a look at this dual stage CO2 regulator. Now, what does the CO2 regulator have to do with this shelf? Well, the thing is that I'm currently running CO2 on 305 aquariums. So this one in the middle and the two down below as well. So here down low, I have separate CO2 systems for every aquarium. So I'm currently using three DOI CO2 systems and one citric acid and baking soda. That one is actually currently not in use, but still here. So this takes up a lot of space. It looks very messy, so I want to do something about that. So that's where this regulator comes into play, because with this regulator, we're able to add so-called manifold blocks. And these manifold blocks basically act as a splitter. So we're able to split the CO2 into multiple tanks. And I think this regulator can actually hold up to six or seven of these manifold blocks. So we're able to run CO2 on six or seven tanks with just one regulator. So that's pretty cool. I'm complete, completely new to this. This is the first time I'm using a regulator like this. So let's just test it out. So thank you to Fzone for sponsoring another video. I'll leave their website in the video description as well as in the pinned comment. Together with my discount code, which will give you 10% off. I think it's MJ Amsterdam 10, something like that. I'll put it on the screen. Now let's unbox this regulator. Okay, so let's take a look. Should be pretty straightforward. I mean, it's a regulator. User manual. We have a little satchel with an Allen key, two O-rings and two small rubber rings. And the first thing we see is the regulator itself. That's actually looking pretty good. Nice and shiny. Okay, so we already have two of those manifold blocks that I showed you earlier. And they also have some arrows on them. So if I'm not mistaken, if you want to add more of them, we should remove this one. And this one should always be the last. So the one that's with the arrow pointing upwards should always be the last manifold. And besides that, we have a solenoid valve. We have our two pressure gauges, pressure reducer, and that's it. This is a nice looking regulator. I like how shiny it is. I like the little details as well. So we have the F-Zone logo on the pressure reducer. And then there's also two small F-Zone logos inside the gauges. That looks really, really nice. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it. Of course, we have one more thing in the box. I'm guessing this is the plug. Yeah, just a simple EU plug. That's it. Let's hook this one up to a CO2 bottle. Okay, it's a shiny regulator. Deserves a shiny bottle as well. So I got a two kilogram aluminum bottle. I'm sure there's people going to be asking me like, Mark, where did you get that fancy bottle? The uh, thing is, however, that the shop where I got them from doesn't seem to be selling them anymore. So I'll do a little bit, of re little bit of research and if I find them somewhere else, I will leave links in the video description, but I'm not sure if I will. But yeah, I've uh, attached the O-ring to the regulator, so we can now attach it to the CO2 bottle. So that's relatively simple. And then I always like to tighten it a little bit with a wrench. So I'll just put the wrench on there and kind of hold the regulator so it's not moving. And then just not really use a lot of force, but just, just so you make sure it's not going to be leaking, you know? So that's enough. Now we should be good. Before I open the bottle though, I want to add those extra manifold blocks. Now the guys over at Epson were kind enough to send me three extra manifold blocks. So we have five in total. I have five tanks on the shelf. Two of them are not using CO2. But I think I'm going to add all five of them and then I can just close two and I can use them whenever I need. Well, that's looking pretty high tech if you ask me. So I've added the three extra manifolds and those three extra ones didn't have any arrows on them. So I've kept it like I said earlier. Um, so we here we have an arrow pointing that way, that way. And then the last one is going up. I think I'm only gonna be using these three in front basically. Yeah, I think that's it. We can now also open the CO2 bottle. What I like about it by the way is that these manifold blocks are quite heavy, but it's not making the CO2 bottle want to tip over or something. So it's still pretty secure, so that's good. Let's open the bottle. Seems like it's leaking somewhere. So that was a little scary. Apparently this washer was not installed correctly. So this washer goes between the CO2 regulator and the CO2 bottle. 
and it's very hard to see, but it actually has two different sides. And apparently I didn't install it correctly, so I flipped that around and now it's uh, completely airtight. As you can see on the right gauge, we almost have 1500 PSI, so that's probably a lot. On the left one, we don't have anything yet because I haven't opened the uh, uh, regulator yet. Next up I want to do is fill up these bubble counters with some water. Okay, I think we're uh, ready for a test run. I've just plugged the solenoid into a socket. So I've checked the manual and for like ceramic and basic diffusers, they recommend 20 to 30 PSI. So let's set it to like 25. Here we go. And then underneath each manifold block, there's a small uh, needle valve as well. So we can open this up. Oh. <laughs> it just squirted some water out. <laughs> okay, so that one is working. Some more squirts. No. Oh. It's good. Careful. Oof. It's very sensitive. That one's good. And that one is good as well. I guess these ones can be completely closed again. Actually, let's close everything again. Test run completed. All right, so I think that went pretty smooth. Besides a little incident with the washer, that was a very easy setup. I think we're now ready to remove those four old CO2 systems and put this bad boy in place. Yeah, so as you can see, it's just a huge mess. Also with the tubing, we got green, we got black, we got clear. So I'm just gonna get rid of all this. And I bought some new CO2 tubing, so I'm gonna use this for the new regulator. And I'm thinking to actually remove the shelf from the wall and get the tubing behind and attach it to all these steel bars from the shelf. I think that way we can kind of hide it a little bit and just make it look neat, you know? Let's uh, give that a try. Okay, just drained all of the tanks just to reduce the weight a little bit. So now let's see if we can move it away from the wall. Okay, this is taking behind the scenes to a new level. Yeah, I think this, uh, this is enough. This way we should be able to reach all the steel bars and attach the CO2 hoses. Well, took a little while, but we are done. Everything is back in position and the CO2 bottle is where it should be. So just looking at this black basket now, it makes me very happy. Everything is nice and organized. CO2 is up and running as well. So we just have the first three uh, bubble counters basically. Just needs a little bit more fine tuning, but um, so far we're doing good. Yeah, there's a bit too much CO2 coming out of the diffuser, but I'll adjust it later. This tank is looking good, right? I love that red peanut to feed on the rocks and the boost of land that I'm also in there as well. Looks so good. Actually, let's do a little uh, short update on all these things just to finish the video. Why not? So on top of the shelf, we have the moss ball scape for the Thai micro crabs. Oh, there's actually one right there. Hey, it's not very often that we get to see them. I saw one a few days ago and now again, so that's nice. Uh, this, this scape is really nice. It's just super low maintenance. I mean, nothing is really growing apart from this uh, little flame moss in the back. So it's just a water change once a week and yeah, that's it really. And this one I just showed you, it's looking good. That one is one year old now, probably going to be rescaped soon. Then we have the vase. Well, I released a video from this one a few days ago. I was asleep, I think more than a week ago now. But the vase is doing good as well. I love the red cherry shrimp. Looking absolutely beautiful. The uh, small chili vase board as well, starting to get some color. They're still very small, so they need to grow a little bit more. Yeah, the face is doing good. And then lastly, on the bottom, we have the, uh, the Twinscape, the Twin Star Sterilizer experiment. Um, I did a video about that a few days ago as well. Not much has changed. Uh, in the video, I basically talked about how the sterilizer might be affecting the plant growth in here because the plants are actually sl growing slower in this tank. And I've been dosing regularly now and the plants are still showing a nutrient deficiency. So I think it definitely has to do with the sterilizer. So that's it guys, just a quick little side project that I wanted to do for a very long time. I'm really happy with the end result. Looks much more organized down there right now. Really happy with that regulator as well. So thank you to Fzone for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out their website in the video description. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.